Okay, so um, I just want to cover this uh, little aspect of uh, scratching in frameworks and doing 45s on a really small scale like this and how to get them accurate, these miters. Now, remember how I talked about in earlier content about um, not making parts in isolation, like trying to make the, the cut exact away from the actual area you're modeling to fit into place. Like, you would do that with um, this lower and upper frame and then 45 45 right which is cut after the piece is put in these are left square here and then they're just cut off like this eyeballed in right or you can run a line with a straight edge like this if you want and then cut them now when you add in the filler pieces I overrun them remember okay so I cut the first one 45 and shove it in so it's tight and snug and then I le left this loose see and this one here is not glued either this bottom one see see the end of it there but this is glued the miter is glued and this one of course is already done but here so how do I get this miter well you if you lay it over top and you don't glue it like that right what you do is, is you just you can draw a line if you want. I don't because you can eyeball it in. I mean, you can go like this if you care to. Okay. And then what I do is, is I just come in here like this. I just sight that line and cut through both pieces. And then you get a pretty good uh, miter. Sometimes they'll be out just a tiny bit, but not enough to really be a concern. It depends on the angle. I mean, with you know, in my case, it's incredibly difficult to get your head in there, and angle and light and everything else to show something like this. But you can see now, if I'd have cut that a little bit, that's the way it is, though, right? You don't, I don't stress out over stuff like that because once I sand that and I can trim that corner off there, no one's going to know anyway but you. You know, that's another thing I want to just mention too. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. When you're building a model, like, there's always context to the model, right? Like, if you're building for a show, like a juried show, like this is say you're going to go to an IPMS show or something like that, you're going to start a model a year before or whatever, it's going to drive a lot of the integrity of each uh, aspect of the model. Like you're going to really get buried into it because you're always going to be under scrutiny uh, with yourself and what others might think and what others might see. That's a different type of modeling than this. Like even in this case, like this rain lip is not even straight. Right, if you look close here but I don't care like good like that just comes with age like that like I want it bent like that like we don't know there could have been when, when they were putting this vent in or the guy put a ladder up and the thing fell over and it bent this rain lip I mean there's so many things we don't know when multiple contractors touch a building over its history so a lot of the little anomalies like maybe this corner here um, you know this bend here in the rain lip uh, furthermore, there's no doorknob here, but there's a plate there because they don't want access from the rear of this building. You can only exit. Like there'd be a panic bar on the inside, let's say. But as soon as this door shuts, it locks automatically. Nobody's getting in. You know, maybe they have a buzzer bell here. You know, there'll be a lockbox here. So things like that. So before we pass judgment on our own modeling or others, like stand back and think, okay, what's the history of the scene? Like what's the history of of the actual little vignetted scene that's even being modeled, right? Like this concrete slab here would have might have been put in later, much later. It wasn't probably wasn't even there well, when the building was up. Maybe it just cracked away and then somebody a contractor came in and cast a new larger one for whatever reason, right? So those are the things that if you're aware of that, then you don't have to sweat the criticism when it comes, let's say, because a lot of people get, you know, maybe um, jarred by that. And that's normal. That's like any anyone being criticized, right? Criticism is good, but oftentimes criticism can come minus context. Okay? 
so I don't sweat things like this because this here gets nibbled off anyway. And Thank you.